So today I'm going to be talking about a speech that was given at the Women's March um, in January of 2018 by Halsey, singer-songwriter. Um, she didn't end up really, she didn't give a traditional speech, but rather she gave a poem um, entitled The Story Like Mine. So I'm going to... Are there supposed to be slides? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Tech PC. of her poem, the delivery of it, as well as the audience analysis. So as for the context, um, the purpose behind her speech is one, sharing her own personal experiences, as well as reaching out to those that she's speaking to. Um, her speech as presented through her presentation, as well as comments that she has made after, make it clear that her goal was to reach out to as many people as she could to inspire them to share their own stories and to listen to the stories of those around them. As for the rhetorical situation um, kind of that she walked into, there's the current climate um, surrounding sexual assault and acts of sexual violence, as well as the actual Women's March itself, which was where she was presenting this. So Halsey, um, born Ashley Nicolette Frajavane, was born in 1994, so she was 23 at the time that she gave her poem. Um, she was born in New Jersey. 2012, she started writing her own songs and posting them on videos on social media, and she was signed in 2014, um, and since then her career has really taken off. She dropped out of college um, and moved out of her parents' home, and as a result was in and out of um, some friends of her boyfriend's home, as well as occasional homeless shelters. So she is one who experienced her share of hardships um, in her teenage years, which she is not shy about sharing with people. Um, she also has become kind of an icon for, she wants to be a voice for those who Sexuality maybe is judged, or those with personal health concerns. She's bipolar, she has endometriosis, and she has spoken out a lot about that as well. And so that's kind of the background of who she is and what she stands for. So the current climate in which she was giving this speech um, was around the context of the Time's Up movement, which had started to meet in fall of 2017, um, striving to find a safe, fair, and dignified work um, for all women of all kinds, as well as the Me Too movement, which started in 2006, um, to help survivors of sexual violence. So with um, the Women's March, groups like this had organized together and founded together with Planned Parenthood um, and such to create the second Women's March, which was in 2018, the first being in 2017. This is the mission statement of the Women's March um, on their website. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but essentially this first sentence, to harness the political power of diverse women and their communities to create transformative social change in a nonviolent way. So the history of the Women's March, it was the largest single day protest in U.S. history. Um, it was, the first one was in 2017, January 21st, the day after Trump's inauguration. And this was in response to um, comments that people found from Trump to be anti-women um, or otherwise offensive. And it was started through Facebook pages from a lawyer in Hawaii who started kind of this, we should start a march. And it was joined by other people who wanted to do their own marches or contribute, and it kind of banded together to become the more formally organized Women's March, now having their own website who organize these marches. So the Women's March 2018. There were events in different countries as well, Canada, Japan, one in Italy. Um, there were approximately 250 marches that took place with some of the bigger cities. I didn't list them all there, but there's DC, LA, New York City, Chicago, Philadelphia, Seattle. Um, to name a few. At the New York Women's March in particular, which is where Halsey gave the speech, there was about 200,000 people there. So, the substance of her speech. Her opening, she gets up and she um, looks a little bit nervous, but she starts by telling the audience this is her second march, that she was in DC in 2017, and that she came back in 2018 to give a speech. Which she then says, I don't know how to do a speech unless it rhymes, so I'm gonna share a poem with you. So the body and organiza organization of this speech or poem itself, she starts out by recounting an experience of a friend of hers um, who uh, was at the experience as a, her friend at Planned Parenthood um, after suffering um, at the hands of someone that they knew through an after school program. She then recounts her own personal experiences as well as her experiences post-celebrity status, which she kind of draws attention to, you know, I'm on top of the world, I felt like I was untouchable and this still happened again. She then um, shares her the experiences of other people who have inspired her. Um, 
part of the quote that she says, but then heroes like Ashley and Simone and Gabby, Michaela and Gaga, Rosario, Allie, and she continues to um, kind of recount how there are people out there with similar stories who some have voices and some don't. But she closes with a strong call to action. Um, and I wanted to play that call to action, so we'll listen to that next part. So this is the last little bit of her speech. Hopefully there's volume. But we are not free until all of us are free. So love your neighbor. Please treat her kindly. Ask her her story and then shut up and listen. Black, Asian, poor, wealthy, trans, cis, Muslim, Christian, listen, listen, and then yell at the top of your lungs. Be a voice for all those who have prisoner tongues. For the people who had to grow up way too young, there is work to be done. There are songs to be sung. Lord knows there's a war to be won. Thank you. Um, so there are, is her call to action, kind of the close to her speech. Very powerful, very strong, which moves me into the delivery of her speech. Her presence, she stands there. She knows what she's talking about. She's passionate about it. And you can see that in the way that she presents herself. As for her vocal delivery, much of the speech is similar to what we just heard. It starts out with a much softer tone. Um, there's almost a quiver in her voice as she's talking about this experience with her friend at such a young age. And as she continues to grow, the passion, the almost anger behind her continues to grow as well. Her voice tends to raise, her pace quickens, and she really shows that power um, and that true belief and support of what she's saying. Um, her eye contact and notes, she is looking down often, I mean she is reciting this poem and you can tell there are parts where she's looking at her notes, but it doesn't seem to detract from the strong power of what she's saying, in part because of the large crowd. She's not going to be making eye contact with each individual person the way you would in a small class like this. Um, but she, she overcomes that kind of use of notes, which I think is incredible. Her animation, she tends to stand behind the podium. Um, she moves her fist down a lot in anger or reaches out. So it's kind of those same movements that goes along with the gestures, but they're powerful and they show that she is passionate again and, and firmly convinced and convicted, she's trying to get us to believe um, as well. Again, her poison stance, she knows what she wants, she's leaning into the audience, she's reaching out, she's not just kind of standing there like, I wrote this poem for you and I'm going to read it and hope that something sticks. Um, and language, well for one, there's a few BYU not appropriate words in there, so I did play some other parts, but her language, it's general, she's telling her story and she's making it connect to people who have similar stories who maybe aren't at that celebrity status. But this moves me into the audience analysis, maybe. Oh, I'm not in slideshow mode, that's why. So, audience analysis. There were about 2,000 people directly in front of her as she recounts. However, she says it didn't have an impact. There was a small applause at the end and she felt like she hadn't reached people. But when she got back um, to her room and she was checking her phone, that's when she saw the huge blow up on social media, how many people commented saying, yes, this is what I need, this gives me a voice and sharing their own stories as well. Um, she was then invited to pre um, present another poem at Glamour called Inconvenient Women and she spoke at the Blossom Ball about endometriosis. So that's kind of where she's gone since this speech took off. Um, but why, why Halsey? Why this speech? Why is this something we need to remember? And it goes back to that quote that I initially started sharing. Um, she starts, but then heroes like Ashley and Simone and Gabby, Michaela and Gaga, Rosario, Ali, and I'd add Halsey, remind me this is the beginning, this is not the finale, and that's why we're here, and that's why we rally, and that's why we all should care about Halsey.